Hello everyone and welcome to the second day of the finals of the Opera Euro Rapid. This is game 4 and Magnus needs the win to tie the match and force the match to go into tie break. So Wesley won uh, the, sec the, uh, the third game of the match and uh, it's, uh, well, it's all or nothing for Magnus. Wesley can just uh, enjoy a nice draw and he will still win the event. So without further ado, let's check it out as this game uh, features a, a lot, a lot of crazy ideas. So uh, I'm sure you guys are going to enjoy it. And yes, Magnus promoted to a knight in the previous video that I've shown, not to a queen. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I, I guess I was just, uh, I knew that the piece was immediately captured, so I presumed that, uh, you know, uh, he promo promoted to a queen, but it doesn't matter. He could have promoted to a, a bishop, a knight, a queen, or a rook. Wesley's next move would have been the same. So thank you for uh, reminding me, uh, but luckily it, it doesn't change the outcome of the game. So uh, that being said, uh, let's check out the, this game and we're going to do all the promotions correctly. So here Magnus again opens with e4 and another e5 by Wesley. Uh, knight to f3, knight to c6 and now bishop to c4 and Wesley goes for knight to f6. The two knights defenses on the board. Uh, we have d3 by Magnus and now bishop to c5. So kind of copying uh, the game they already played. We have c3 and the both players castle. Uh, we have castles by black, castles by white, and the now d6. So, uh, very symmetrical stuff. Rook to e1, again, not interested in this because of rook e2. We will always mention this. And now a5, as the white was threatening some expansion here on the queen side. And here, uh, in the previous game that we've shown, knight b to d2 was the idea. But here, we have the immediate bishop to g5. So, uh, how do you handle this and how do you get rid of this tension? Because uh, the bishop is on c5, it's not on e7. So you could have some uh, problems here as, uh, well, white might be interested in opening up your king side completely. So here uh, we have uh, h6, uh, forcing the bishop to move back, bishop to h4, and now Wesley even goes for g5. So attacking Carlson's bishop here, bishop to g3, and now bishop back to b6. So it looks very scary going for this expansion, uh, but if it if it works, why not? We have knight to a3 by Magnus, and now there is a game in the database where bishop to g4 was played, but here we have knight to h7 by Wesley, and it is uh, as of move 11 that we have a completely new game. Now Wesley can start pushing these pawns on the king side even further, and he might even push g4, clear the g5 square for his knight, and so on. Uh, so let's see what happened here. We have knight to c2. Uh, Magnus wants to remaneuver this knight into the game. Also, you have knight support for d4 if you ever want to push that. Uh, we have h5 now threatening to win the bishop with h4. So Magnus has to make some room for his bishop. We have h3 and now h4. Uh, if you're wondering why not the g4 to completely bust open the position, the problem is that uh, Magnus has one move that doesn't allow that, and that move is bishop, uh, bishop to h4. Going after the queen here, and after the queen moves, now just knight g5. And after the knight captures, for example, captures, uh, you haven't really done anything, you've only weakened your king. And if you go for some further captures looking for adventure, uh, queen captures on h5, and it's game over. There's no move black can make here. Uh, you cannot move the f-pawn. This is, of course, pinned. And any silly move like let's say queen g4 with uh, an offer of a queen trade is met with a uh, with a uh, with a checkmate into queen g6 check. You cannot capture because the pawn is pinned. And after the king moves, just bishop f7 checkmate. Uh, bishop f6 checkmate. So after this h3, we have the absolutely best move h4, pushing the bishop back. And only now after bishop to h2, we have g4. This is how Wesley does it. We have h captures and now bishop captures on g4. Now Carlson's knight is pinned here, and Wesley is bringing the knight to g5 to help out with the attack on the knight. And the white's king side uh, will also be cracked open. So here d4, Magnus strikes in the center, and in doing so, closes this diagonal. Uh, we have e captures on d4, knight captures, knight c capture, uh, captures on d4, we have knight captures on d4, and now c captures on d4. Uh, we have knight to g5 now, putting pressure on this knight here, and Magnus goes queen to d3. Now he's of course ready to move this knight, but Wesley not interested in allowing that, just goes knight captures on f3. We have g captures and bishop back to h uh, uh, five now, not the h3. You want to uh, allow this um, uh, square for for the pawn, and also the queen might be interested in that square. So uh, better not uh, ruin your choices right away. And here Magnus pushes e5, and already we have a very very interesting position because Wesley locks the position with d5. If you capture, then it's just game over. Rook captures on e5, and that's it. There are too many threats here. 
uh, for, uh, for, uh, for for white, uh, sorry, for black, king, uh, a king is coming to h1, rook is coming to g1, and it's not going to be able, the black king will not be able to handle this. If bishop g6, uh, we already mentioned that the f-pawn is pinned, so just queen captures and g6 ends the game. So instead, after e5, we have d5, Wesley closes the position, bishop back to b3, and now a4 by Wesley. And this is the position everyone's been discussing. Uh, White actually has a winning maneuver here, so feel free to pause the video and win this game for Magnus while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not being materialistic and ignoring that bishop on b3 completely. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the winning move here is actually the incredible king to h1. You have to free up this g file for the rook as soon as possible. And now uh, the, the problem is it's not uh, absolutely clear. If you capture the bishop, then white is winning on the spot because after rook to g1 check, there's not all that much black can do. Uh, because, uh, well, you, you could move the king, king to h8, for example, and then comes e6. But this e6 move is the move that Magnus missed, most likely. I think he mentioned it in the interview after the game, that e6 just completely crushes black. There's no defense uh, against uh, anything here. It's just uh, too, too powerful of a move. And, for example, if you play something like f6 to block off this uh, bishop to e5 idea, uh, you have to play something like f6, but then queen to f5. You go after the bishop here, and after, let's say, queen e8 defending the bishop, now you go bishop to e5, and this is just insane. You're threatening to capture here, and after bishop captures on e5, then queen captures on e5 with check, and that's it. King h7, queen captures, uh, queen g7 checkmate. So all of this is uh, very, very uh, interesting, but uh, after this king to h1 move, uh, you don't actually have to capture the bishop. You can play a lot of different stuff, like bishop to g6, you can just attack the queen, but still rook to g1. You just pin the bishop and you don't care. If king to h7 on pinning, you even sacrifice the exchange here. F, F captures and now rook to g1, threatening captures and checkmate, and after, let's say, rook to f5, blocking the queen's um, uh, reach of the g6 pawn, now comes bishop to c2, and you have this very, very nice position where white uh, has a beautiful position. Most likely white is completely winning, but, uh, you know, it's uh, not all that easy to take all of this into consideration when the, t the clock is ticking. It's a rapid game and, you know, your bishop was just under attack. It's normal to move your piece when it's under attack. So Magnus actually moves it to d2. You don't want to play bishop to c2. If bishop to c2, then black can just play bishop to g6 and trade, uh, trade off those, those light square bishops. And uh, Magnus wants to keep the light square bishops on the board for the moment. Now, uh, playing uh, bishop to the D1 uh, is a bit dangerous because it also uh, disconnects your rooks and once you, your rooks have been connected you never want to disconnect them that's kind of a rule in chess so here queen g5 check king to h1 now hoping for rook to g1 to win the queen but of course uh, just bishop to g6 now uh, attacking carlson's queen queen to e2 and now even giving up the d4 uh, pawn for some attacking chances so bishop captures on d4 and rook to g1 now attacking wesley's queen queen to h5 and now comes queen to d2 so attacking the bishop here and now of course you cannot capture if you capture yes the queen defends it but the rook to g5 and hello uh, your bishop is gone so instead, after queen to d2, we have c5 defending the bishop and now f4 by Magnus, preparing uh, to, to further push this pawn to f5. Also, this opens up an attack towards uh, Wesley's queen. And uh, if you play something like queen to f5, then bishop to c2 could be very strong. So instead, Wesley plays queen to h6. This is the absolute best idea because now f5 is impossible. The queen would be hanging on d2. So instead, we have rook to g5 by Magnus, now hoping to throw this uh, move in, and Wesley plays the only move, good move he has, and that's f6. So challenging the rook here, e captures, and now bishop captures, again with an attack on the rook. We have queen captures on d5 by Magnus, king to h8, and now it's a pretty pretty tough position for Magnus. The, the rook is under attack, the rook needs to move, but Magnus doesn't move it. Rather, he plays bishop to f3. And this is the correct idea. You want to give up the rook, but Wesley, of course, doesn't want to capture it. Because if you capture the rook, uh, you're dead lost. Uh, f captures, attacks the queen, and after the queen moves wherever, it doesn't really matter. It's either this and then bishop to e5, winning the queen. Or if queen to h7, again, bishop delivers check, and then you have to block with, with the queen. So it's the same stuff. So after 
after bishop to f3, Wesley plays the absolute best move, and that is a3. He completely ignores uh, what Carlsen is doing, and now just uh, uh, is ready to capture here. Capturing is impossible because the rook hangs on a1. So Magnus quickly shifts the other rook into the attack, rook a to g1, and Wesley just plays a captures on b2. Again, like in the previous video, Wesley cool as a cucumber. So rook captures on g6, Magnus has to go for this, even though uh, it doesn't promise much, but uh, you know, uh, it, it has to be done. So here Magnus goes for it, rook captures, queen captures, rook captures, but now Wesley gets his own queen back into the game. Uh, b1 pawn uh, delivers the check with the queen, and now uh, you have to move the rook because the rook on g6 will also be hanging. So rook back to g1, attacking the queen, queen back to h7. Uh, and now Magnus uh, down, uh, down, a, uh, down a hole, uh, uh, down, sorry, what is Magnus down? Magnus is down the exchange. Uh, but yeah, he still has the bishop pair. And uh, I mean, uh, if he can get those uh, bishops to be fully operational, will be very good for him. So he starts with f5. And it's uh, it, it definitely makes sense. He creates an outpost here on g6 for the rook. So if the rook can come to g6, maybe bishop to f4, and then let's say rook h6, you could maybe trap the queen. But also it's just nice to have your pieces so deep into your opponent's position. Uh, Wesley, of course, not interested in allowing that. He plays rook to g8, immediately tries to counter that rook. Magnus goes rook to e1, and Wesley immediately brings the other rook into the game to counter now the rook on the e file. So Magnus now goes rook to e6, but Wesley very happily trades. Uh, rook captures on e6, and now queen captures on e6. F, uh, uh, we have f captures on e6 um, by uh, generating a passed pawn here, but uh, it doesn't help you because here just queen to b1 check, and you have to block. If, if you block with the bishop, it, it's just checkmate. The rook covers that square, so you would have to block with the bishop or the queen. Uh, and if bishop d1, just rook g5 now. Uh, what do you do with the queen? This is covered. You don't have any checks. You have to move and you also have to keep an eye on the bishop. And now after something like queen f3, you still have to keep an eye on the bishop. Uh, rook to f5 now, defended by the queen. And that's just it. Not much to be done here. Queen e2, rook d5, and uh, white is now completely lost. So uh, instead, after rook captures on e6, Magnus plays queen captures on e6, and now comes queen to h6 by Wesley, defending the bishop here, and Magnus now has to figure out how to get past uh, uh, Wesley's defenses, because he absolutely must win this uh, in order to win the event, otherwise Wesley is the winner. So he shifts the bishop over to d1. Uh, maybe he can create some chances here, maybe bishop here, put some pressure here, or maybe, uh, you know, the bishop c2 to, to help out with with the pawn, but it's all very unclear. There is no good move here for white, so uh, Magnus just has to wait uh, for Wesley to maybe make some sort of a mistake, and he has to have some uh, active moves possible. So queen to g5, now threatening checkmate, and just queen to e4, guarding against checkmate. We have queen to d2, attacking the light square bishop, and bishop back to g4. We have queen back to g5 by Wesley, and now f3, defending that bishop. Uh, queen to c1 with check, king to g2, and now uh, Wesley doesn't even want to mess around. He just sacrifices this pawn uh, to open up lines towards the white king. So king captures on h3, and now queen to h6 with check. Now with the idea of queen to h4. So king g3, and now not going for this right away, but rather rook to d8 first. Preparing to also deliver the check with the rook on d2 after this check is given. And uh, I know that we already uh, said, uh, we already declared the worst, the absolute worst bishop pair in chess history uh, in that game from Linares between uh, Vasily Manchuk and uh, Garry Kasparov. Uh, but this could very well be the second uh, worst bishop pair in chess history so uh, i don't know I, I might even use this as a thumbnail as it's uh, it, it's just amazing to have a bishop pair this bad i mean it it, it hurts seeing this uh but yeah what are you gonna do uh you know uh, it can be helped uh, so here bishop to h3 was played uh, but now just rook to uh, sorry, queen to g5 with check. We have bishop back to g4 blocking. Now queen to h6. Wesley is actually very happy with a draw uh, because he only needs a draw to win the tournament. So bishop uh, back to g1. And now queen to h4 with check. King to g2. Now comes rook to d2 with check. And here the problem is Magnus is unable to escape uh, all the checks. King f1, rook to d1 with check. You cannot... Uh, uh, do anything if you go for king to e2 then the problem is uh, you don't uh, go for the bishop but rather queen to e1 is just checkmate so you can't even afford to maybe 
uh, try and uh, give up uh, one of that uh, one of those bishops uh, to maybe stir some trouble because you're just getting checkmated. So here, king back to g2 by Magnus and Wesley very happily repeats rook d2 check, king f1, rook d1 check, king g2, and after rook to d2 check, it was declared a draw as it's also a draw by threefold repetition. So uh, while the position is completely winning for Wesley, Wesley uh, doesn't uh, care and he only needs a draw here uh, to uh, uh, win the event as he already won the, won the third game and now uh, that's pretty, pretty, pretty bad as, uh, uh, as uh, well, it, it, was a, it was a very good chance for Magnus. He had the white pieces and he could have, uh, you know, accomplished something, but, uh, you know, it, it, it all came down to this moment. After Wesley played a4, uh, I mean, but who will who will find the move? King h1. You play king h1 in this position. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, really, uh, you know, a, a study-like move. And it's still not clear. Even after the engine gives you an answer, it's still, you know, you have, there are all of these possibilities, over the, all of these uh, sidelines that you have to consider. And, you know, of course, that's uh, a lot, but that's the beauty of top-level chess. And as Wesley mentioned in an interview after the game, uh, his favorite format uh, of all the formats is rapid chess. So uh, it's uh, definitely fitting for him to win this event. Uh, even though Magnus is the world rapid champion, Wesley again uh, takes the win away from Magnus. And interestingly, Magnus still has yet to win, uh, win a tournament uh, in 2021. And uh, he hasn't won a tournament since he hit 30 years old. So that uh, that must be very uh, very depress depressing for him, but uh, you know uh, the, the the year is still long. So yeah, uh, pretty pretty crazy stuff here. And um, yeah, uh, Wesley played uh, uh, the entire tournament brilliantly. He bounced back yesterday, which was uh, uh, which was pretty pretty awesome. Uh, just uh, you know. Uh, not going into into the second day being uh, being down a match and here uh, he just you know uh, completely dominated the the entire event sure magnus had some chances but uh, exploiting these chances uh, requires uh, uh, a lot of calculation and a lot of concentration which simply the rapid time format doesn't allow but that's the beauty of quicker time formats we don't always get the absolute perfect engine lines up to move 25 even though sometimes we do uh, but we get uh, you know crazy crazy games like uh, these and this is what uh, we we all want uh, and, and in the end uh, what we all enjoy uh so yeah uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it and my short coverage of this tournament. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Marcus Van Atten, Philip Tuckman, Michelle Delmont, Shi Zhang, and Paolo Torini for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and continuing the Morphe saga. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Once again, huge congratulations to Wesley So on winning the entire thing, and that's it. Uh, thank you all and uh, I will see you soon.